What's up guys? It's Tony Holiday. Just gonna do a quick tutorial for you today. I'm gonna show you some really helpful tips that I found as someone who didn't play piano or keys growing up. And these are especially useful in music production because it's all done inside the box in the piano roll. This is gonna be broken down into three steps or kind of three and a half steps. But basically there's three things I like to apply to basic triads and basic chords in order to make them sound more human, more realistic, and just overall better in all of your productions. I'm going to show you these three tips today and what we're gonna do is just start with some basic triads on a piano, just a Steinway Grand that comes stock and logic so everybody can do this. And I'm gonna show you how easy it is to actually make your progression sound a lot better, more professional, more realistic. Without further ado, let's get into the tutorial, let's jump into logic, and I'm going to show you how to make your progression sound more professional, better, in three easy steps. Let's go. All right, you guys, you should be able to see logic here. I just have a blank project. The only thing that I've done is just added the stock Steinway Grand Piano that comes with logic. Now to find that, you just go into the piano section and then click Steinway Grand Piano. It comes with a couple buses to start and it's built in the logic sampler. Haven't done anything else. We're gonna do this from scratch, but I'm going to show you how you can take the chords and triads that you build on this and make them into more interesting chords more interesting progressions. First thing that we're gonna to do to start off, we're just gonna make the tempo a bit faster and we're gonna turn on the loop function by pressing C on our keyboard. So we have 145 tempo, we have the loop function on, it's just a simple four bar and we have the grand piano. Let's start making this chord progression and we're just gonna start with some basic triads. So I'm gonna go into here with the pencil tool, I'm gonna open up a MIDI window and now we can start drawing our chord progression. I wanna do this in the key of F sharp minor. It's a key that I use often, especially in hip hop, trap, things like that. It's a very popular modern key. So let's do it in that one for now. First one we're gonna do is F sharp minor. We're gonna do one, four, six, five for the progression. If you're not sure about numbers in that, I have a video in the top here you can take a look at, and that kind of explains uh, basic scales and chord progression. So check that one out if you're unfamiliar with the number system. So we have one, the F sharp minor, we're gonna do four. It's also a minor chord. Then we'll do six. And five. We have the chords for F sharp minor. It's one, four, six, Five. And we're going to take these bottom notes, also known as the root note of the chord. And I'm just doing that by clicking shift and then I'm clicking each note so that it uh, allows us to select them all. We can then press command C and command V to copy and then shift option down on our keyboard and that'll bring everything down an octave which will create a bass note for these chords. I like doing this because when you have a root note as the bass note, and you move it down, it gives you a reminder and a baseline as to what chords you're actually working with because that's gonna happen the next step when we start inverting notes. It can be confusing if you don't play piano or you don't understand a ton of music theory to know which chords you're actually playing. So having the bass notes is a really good help for that. Let's take a listen to this basic triad progression in F sharp minor and then we'll start making some changes to it and hopefully making it sound more professional and human and just better. So to make these changes, I'm just gonna duplicate this track and duplicate the MIDI down. And we're gonna call the top one before and we'll call this one after, just so we can make a comparison at the end to make sure that we've actually made something that sounds better. First thing that I'll do with these chords a lot of the time is I'll start adding different voicings to it. So for in this instance, let's add sevenths to these. That'll give it a little more texture, make them a little more interesting. And it also gives us another note to make as a common note when we start inverting notes. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. This is kind of the one and a half steps and that's because it has the sevenths and the inversions in there. The seventh in minor chords is two down from the one. So that's kind of the thing I do is I'll grab the one and I'll just drag it down two. Then I'll bring it up another octave and then that makes a seventh chord. A minor seventh chord. Same thing here, bring that up. Now this one's a major. So the seventh is actually one down. So we can do that and then bring this two down and bring it that. How I'm dragging those notes is I'm clicking the note and I'm holding option, which then gives it that little green plus there. And that allows me to drag things and duplicate them in their new position when I let go of my cursor. It's 
already sounding a little bit better, but it's still kind of janky, if you will. We need to make some more changes here that are going to make it sound more cohesive. This is where inversions come in. So as you can see these notes, they're kind of all over the place. There's these two down here, which are you know not related to anything. These two up here don't have any connection here. They connect to the next chord here, the third chord, and the fourth one doesn't have any common notes with this uh, third chord. So we're gonna start inverting these notes so that they actually just glide into each other and there's less notes that are changing between each chord. This is useful because if you think about someone actually playing a piano, it would be rare for them to go like a triad, triad to triad to triad, moving their hands all over the keyboard. With this, what we're trying to achieve is the minimum movement of your hands when you're actually playing a keyboard. But for people that don't actually play keyboard, i.e. myself, this is how you would do it in a piano roll. First thing I'm going to do is take these two and I'm going to put them up an octave. And now they have these common notes here with the second chord, they just blend into each other. And these two are the ones that are different. Next, I think I'm gonna to go to the third chord and drop that one down an octave. And finally, with the fourth chord, I'll drop that one down an octave as well. So now you can see these notes all sort of blend into each other and there's minimal movement between the ones that don't blend into each other. Let's take a listen to this now with the inversions and see how it sounds. Already sounds a lot more interesting. The chords have a lot more color and texture to them just by adding a seventh and then inverting the notes that they glide into each other. So next step, and what we're gonna do on this one is we're going to slightly arpeggiate notes so that it sounds like someone would be playing them. Again, we wanna think about someone playing a keyboard. So if you take a keyboard, it'd be extremely rare if someone could press all the keys at the exact same time and not have any variation of your fingers hitting different keys. Even though it's just milliseconds we're talking about, it still makes a big difference. So this is called using the Q flam. We're gonna select all our notes by pressing Command A. We're gonna go up to here, which is in the inspector. We're gonna hit more and make sure your quantize is on either 132nd or 164th. I'm going to do the 164th because it's the smallest denominator. So it moves them the slightest. And then this little section here, Q flam, is the one that you wanna look at. So if we click this area and then we drag upwards, it's going to arpeggiate the notes that we've made so that they sound like they're being played kind of sequentially versus just all at the same time. Watch the MIDI notes here as I move the Q flam up. as you can see, if we move it up a lot to something like 154 ticks, this is going to be quite a noticeable arpeggiation. So let's take a listen. Sounds cool, but probably not the way someone would actually play that. You're not going to go fully in like that. So let's bring this down to maybe something like, uh, let's do 75. sounding a lot better and again, more realistic. Even this might be too much given some cases, but just for the sake of this tutorial, I wanna show you how to make that sound. The third and the last step here, what we're gonna to do to these notes is we're gonna humanize them. And there's a function in logic in the MIDI transform function here, which is excellent for doing this and it's called humanize. If you haven't seen my how to create an awesome hotkey tutorial, you can watch that up here. But basically what it is is making a hotkey for this, which makes it super easy every time you're making a progression to just humanize the notes so it sounds more realistic, more full. So let's go to functions, MIDI transform, humanize. And this is what the MIDI transform window looks like. We have a couple different options here. There's position, velocity, and length. I don't personally like to use length that much. So I actually go to through, which just makes that a void category. Velocity, I will leave at plus or minus random 10, which means it's going to take the base notes here that we have. They're all at velocity 80, and it's going to uh, variate the notes so that they're within 10 um, of that original 80, plus or minus. So this position is gonna move the notes randomly plus or minus 10 as well. I like to move this down a little bit to like six or seven. I don't like them to move too much, especially with Q-Flam. If you start to move notes that are forward or back, it can sound a bit interesting. So let's just leave that at seven and the velocity will leave at 10. So now we can go operate only and maybe do it twice. And you can see now the notes all have different velocities. This one here is at 78, this is at 68, 
This is at 93. Again, what we're trying to apply here is the humanized function so that it sounds like a human is playing it. There's nobody ever in the world that's gonna be able to play keys all at the same time on every downbeat, every single key for the exact length and at the same velocity. Maybe there is somebody, but that would be incredible. I would honestly pay to see that. But this is how you're gonna make your MIDI sound like someone is actually playing it. Now let's take a listen to this. We have the humanize on, Q flam, We've inverted the notes and added a seventh to each of these. I don't like these notes. They're a little bit too much. So I can do TV on my keyboard and get the velocity tool out and bring them a bit down again. You wanna make it human, but the mistakes to be subtle so that it's a kind of nice sounding humanized function. Let's take a listen to the before and the after with the piano and see how it sounds to see if we've made a difference that we actually like. We'll go to before, and this is the MIDI for that, which is our basic triads, the key of F sharp minor. And our after. Personally, I think I'm gonna go with the after. In my opinion, it just sounds more cohesive something that I would be more interested as a listener in listening to. So that's why you can apply these and you know do different things. Maybe you're, you're going for something with just a triad sound. Just use the triads, that's all good. But even slight inversions and such can bring out the sound you want. You don't have to do all three of these every time. These are just three steps that you can use and you can use them together if you really do wanna make a human sounding piano or keys. All right guys, just a quick tutorial there for you today. I hope you found that helpful. It's something that I found really useful, especially in making more kind of groove tracks, R&B, things like that. It's just really nice if you can move basic triads around, add some notes to them, humanize them, cue flam them, and then your MIDI progressions are gonna sound like someone actually played them using a keyboard into your DAW. I think it's really useful, especially when you're using things like pads or really ambient keys, so there's not major jumps in the MIDI. But yeah, guys, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to my channel as I'm always putting out more music production content. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram as well, and hit me up on Twitter or in the comments for maybe other suggestions for videos that you'd like me to do, and I'll see if I can make those for you. Thank you so much for watching, guys. This is Tony Holiday, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.